Most people think AI automations take minutes to build, but that's a huge misconception. So today I'm putting that to the ultimate test and building three automations with strict time limits. One I can only spend one hour on, another one I'm going to spend 10 hours on, and one that's going to take me 100 hours in total. And by the end, you'll see the real difference between a quick hack, a useful tool, and a system that companies will actually pay for. So let's set the timer and we'll start. So we just finished the first hour and I wanted to build something that would just be a little bit of fun, something that I could use every day. And as you can see, it's a single workflow connecting two of my services, which are Google Calendar and Google Mail. And I could have done this with any two services. So at 9 a.m. each day, it reads all the events in my calendar, returns all those events, and then formats them into a nice format and effectively sends me this very simple email happy Wednesday, gives me the day, and then says, these are your emails for the day. Instead of going into my calendar every, every morning, it's gonna send me this email with all the info for the day. It basically has no logic here. There's no areas where it's, if this happens, then this, so no conditionals, and also no error handling. So it works, and we've, we've completed that in an hour, but it's probably what I call a shallow workflow and likely to break under any sort of scale. You don't really, in an hour, create very much business value with this kind of automation. And if I just think about where it falls short, it's pretty much everywhere, right? Firstly, if I think about it, is it actually that useful? When I could just look in my calendar, like it shows me what is possible from an automation standpoint, but doesn't actually add any value to my day-to-day. -day. It's a complete linear path, so it doesn't consider any edge cases. Like for example, if I had a day event for the whole day, I wonder how it would actually treat that. Let's rerun it. And you can see it's already broken, right? It doesn't really understand. It just says dash day event. It doesn't actually pull any of that detail. And ultimately what I'm doing is just connecting two services together that are usually separate services. So in an hour, you can build something cool, but it's not a system. It's a shortcut or a little bit of a gimmick, a little bit of fun and a demonstration of what's possible. So it gives me some great learnings for going into the 10 hour build because I'm now gonna start building a system that helps me with something that my business has to do, which is invoice reconciliation. So you probably know the pain, matching receipts to invoices manually Let's crack on with the 10 hour build and try to automate that full process now. Okay, so we're five hours into the 10 hour build now and it doesn't look like much for five hours, but everything is being tested as we go along. So it does take quite a bit of time. And these things always take longer than you think they're gonna actually take in practice. And I honestly thought at this point, I could probably do this part of the flow in two hours, but here we are anyway. So the first part of the flow that we set out to build is actually working really well. So we're monitoring our emails, we're working out whether this is a transaction email or not, i.e. should we ignore it or should we actually process it? And then extracting that text from the email and determining does it have a file attached to it? If it has a file, then we're gonna actually process it. If it doesn't have a file, then we're gonna follow this second path, which we've not moved on to yet. If it does have a file, let's store that in our Google Drive. And you can see from the test that it's actually um, uploading all of these. And what it's actually doing is basically working out if there are any duplicates that already exist in that file. So sometimes you will have a case where you receive multiple invoices twice or multiple of the same invoice twice. And therefore I don't want to save it again and again. So what it's gonna do is just identify, is this a unique inter invoice? And if it is unique, then what we're gonna do is save the attachment. If it is not unique, then we're actually not gonna save it at all. We're not gonna process it. But what I've realized this as I go through is that the complexity of dealing with files and text together. So we're storing all of the files, but what we need to do is say, if a file is actually received in the Google Drive, then activate the flow to basically use these OCR tools to get the text from the images or the text from the PDFs, whatever file we save. But we also need to actually process the text in the same way 
from the actual email. So we will have this attachment reaching down to these next steps, which we already mapped out, but we will have this additional flow trigger probably somewhere over here that says if a Google Drive file is received, then we should also take that information and summarize it. So both paths are going to converge on this section here. We just need to figure out how to actually put that all together now and introduce the different areas where we summarize and actually find matching transactions. And these are the exact kind of edge cases that you realize when you invest a little bit more time into your automations and you go through and you're taking that time and you're testing every step as you go through. And the most important thing is we set out that initial requirement scope or specification that we're now able to uh, follow through. Let's get back to it for the last five hours now and get this flow done. Okay, so we're done. It took some time, but 10 hours later, and we've replaced a manual task in my business completely. Well, nearly anyway. So this workflow now, as you saw before, does this whole monitoring process where we're monitoring the emails, working out whether they're transactions, taking the files, like the invoice or receipts and uploading them to Google Drive. But now it goes one step further and we have this second trigger that we alluded to before, but there's two formats of input. We have the email input that we rece receive initially. So it could say in the text of the email and we could work out what the transaction amount is there and therefore reconcile it with existing transactions. Or we could say, actually we've had a new receipt added to this Google Drive and therefore we're gonna upload it to an OCR model i.e. it's gonna convert our images to text and extract all the details we want from there and then pass that into the same process. So there's two ways in which this could be triggered, which is one of the things that makes this a slightly more complex use case. What we're then doing is extracting the exact amount from either the email or the invoice. And that's because I found during testing, it's the best way to actually reconcile it against a specific transaction in our in our Google Sheet. And we're just gonna sort that by newest so that we're most likely to get the correct thing. And then what we're doing is basically going over each item that's passed in, because we can have multiple passed in, and trying to find and match that transaction. So we have the comparison of the data that we've received from the email or from the file, and trying to match it to a live banking transaction. If that's found, we then update and put all that information together in a row so it's nice and clean. But if we don't find it, we've got a human supervision check here where we actually append it to a list and we go and we're able to manually then reconcile those so they don't just disappear into the void. So it monitors my emails for invoices, it matches them against transactions and saves all the files ready for my tax return and it will save me hours per week, but also a lot of pain when it comes to the actual tax filing. So you can now see it takes a full day, even as an experienced builder, to do something like this. It requires debugging as you go through, it requires testing, putting in multiple files, edge cases. And even though it looks impressive, it's still a bit fragile and not entirely complete. And this is where 95% of people underestimate that time needed to actually complete a system like this. So 10 hours feels like a lot, but it only gets you a single contained system. So we're interacting with multiple software elements here and multiple parts of the business, but it's still one single contained system, one single isolated process. And if I pick up just a few things it can't do right now that I thought by this point I'd be able to. I mean, firstly, the obvious ones, like we wanted to upload this data into our accounting software. And right now it's at a state where everything is matched in a Google sheet, but nothing is pushed to our actual accounting software. So we still have a manual process there or more work to do on this. The second is that it doesn't handle all file formats. We have various file formats here, um, PDF and image, but what if it comes in a different file format? Then we're not able to handle that at the moment. There's also only one stage in which we have human supervision, which is when we've got an unmatched transaction. But what about actually testing this over the long run and understanding whether it's performing well or not using evaluations or sending examples to 
a human who can actually say, actually, that was wrong, that was right, and therefore update the workflow. It doesn't have anything like that at the moment. And it basically assumes that everything works okay, but we don't know because we're not checking this. We're assuming it's doing everything for us. And then finally, there's no user feedback that's been embedded in this. So this might work well for my business, but actually I've not tested it with other people's opinions, other people's businesses, and therefore it's not something that could actually be scaled and taken away to someone else's business. So let's move on now to the 100 hour build and show you how far you can actually get when you dedicate a serious amount of time to it. And by the way, a 100 hour build is going to give me enough time to build a real system that a company would actually hire me to build or could actually sell as some sort of software as a service. Because with 100 hours, you get the time to actually build things with real architecture, proper documentation. Think about all these modular bits of design where we actually deconstruct and reuse parts and also testing it thoroughly. It will most certainly involve rewriting certain pieces as we discover new things, but it will actually look like a real product at the end and not an isolated workflow or a gimmick single linear flow like we saw with the one hour build. And this fundamentally is the level that companies pay for. So when I join you back here, I'm gonna have completed that and we'll run through exactly what makes it a 100 hour build. So you've seen that a one hour build creates shortcuts. A 10 hour build automates one isolated business task and connects a few different systems. But it is honestly where most people hit the ceiling because that's when the complexity starts to grow and things to start to break. So the professional tier, the 100 hour build is where you're building actual products and realistically, it's gonna take more than 100 hours. 100 hours might get you to a version, but it will be continuously improving this as well. You can, of course, build systems that sustain themselves, but what you want to do is improve those over time. And we're aiming to build a system here that actually agencies can use or businesses can use to replace agency functions, or we'll just save a business time or money. So the planning process on this is much more thorough. So. We built an SEO blog content writing system that's taken us 100 hours. So it's supposed to be the best in class AI blog writing system. So every AI blog writing system that I've tried has its flaws and I wanted to actually create from scratch something that my business and other people in my community could use where they could effectively achieve this goal, growing organic traffic on autopilot. And they do that through long form, high quality blog articles that hits certain SEO content targets that allows them to bring in traffic organically. So the planning process involved actually looking at the best in class out there, which was outrank.so, and actually reverse engineering that. So we have this process diagram where we've reverse engineered every single step of the onboarding and what we get as a feature set from outrank.so so that we can understand where we want to be different and where we want to replicate or emulate certain good functions of what's already working inside the market. You can see that this expands all the way to hierarchical structures and the difficulty in doing something like this is it's not one isolated task. It's not going to ChatGPT and just asking it to write a long form article. That would give you rubbish outputs. What we're aiming to do is build an entire system that actually helps you properly rank. And agencies make thousands of dollars every month trying to do this manually. So we're replicating real hard graft work. And to do that, you have to have a lot of time invested in the planning to understand each stage, what you need to build out, and ultimately version control. So we knew we'd need a front end, somewhere to store the data, and a content creation set of tools, including NAN, some APIs to get some SEO target keywords, etc., And we basically split this down into two versions. But the point of me telling you this is actually throughout it, you will start building in a modular way. You'll build different functions. And we can see inside the workflow itself, it's actually split down into around 14 
different workflows, some with even sub workflows coming off those, because this is a really complex task to achieve. And this wasn't done in one pass. There were some things that we were unable to do in the 10 hour build that we've now had the time to be able to do. That includes version control. So you can see this is now on version four, 100 hours in. And what I've gone and done is gathered loads of feedback from active users inside our community. You can see 120 different comments on the SEO content generation system here. And all of those bits of feedback have fed into all of the different versions here. So let me just summarize five things that were way more complicated than I expected when I initially set out to do this task. And you'll find the same when you do your longer builds as well. Now, number one is version control. So because my audience here is a set of community members that also want to download the workflow. We need to keep track of every single change and enable those people to actually make the changes to their own workflows as we go through. So you can see we've got all these yellow notes signifying all changes in any versions between version one and four, because any member of the audience could be at any point between the versions and need to understand that next level of steps that they need to make changes to. Having that version control system has allowed us to do something we were unable to do in the 10 hour build, which is actually gather feedback from the users and implement that into multiple versions. And it goes to show that you shouldn't release a perfect version. You should actually release a version as quickly as possible and then get feedback on that so that you can then release future versions and get as much feedback as possible. So inside here, you can see that we've got 120 comments all around this SEO content system and actually gathering that feedback. However, when you're dealing with something so large as this automation was 14 different sub workflows, you need a way to segregate that data. So we stored the data in Airtable, but as we go through, you can see there are so many different tables here that actually what we need to do to have users use it is actually segregate that information to only the journey that we want a user to take. And therefore we've created a separate UI for this, which again, we were unable to do with our isolated task in the 10 hour build. Through that testing, we were then able to also identify some key errors that kept occurring. So there were little logic errors or constant API endpoint struggles where something would generate for one person and not generate for another. So it allowed us to build in that reliability, error handling, and more that we were unable to actually build in that 10 hour build. And then as we started considering actually publishing this to different websites, WordPress and Webflow, we realized that every output that we created adds additional complexity for us because it each has its own format. So we've got to consider separately each output flow process to enable the audience to correctly use it. But the biggest thing we learned is actually just launch with a version and then iterate as you go using user feedback. Because as we finally started testing it and getting real people, real users to test it, you start seeing the cracks, you can work through those. And now it's in a state version four where I could happily commit with a client to manage their SEO content strategy through this system, a real tangible system that could completely replace something that businesses pay people, pay agencies to actually do for them, which is create blog article content on repeat that's high quality and ranks well on Google as well as AI LLMs like ChatGPT. And by the way, if you want to get access to this or any of the other systems we've spent over a hundred hours building, then you can go to school.com slash scrapes and join the community there. And you can download these all as part of your monthly membership. One hour build, great for beginners. You can build something fun, useful, but it is gonna be shallow and you're not necessarily creating that business value. You will be able to potentially create a shortcut or see what's possible. But the 10 hour build is where we really start to see the potential in automation, where most people end up hitting the ceiling. You saw us automate one solid biz business task, our invoice passing process, but we couldn't quite finish it in 10 hours. It wasn't enough, despite us thinking it was gonna be. And you saw also that things break, complexity grows and debugging actually takes time, which took us to the final 100 hour build, the complete professional tier. Now we've just seen how modular and broken down that workflow was because this is actually replacing the entire system or agency work 
and businesses would pay for this kind of stuff. And the reason that agencies charge for this kind of stuff is because it's got reliability, it's got complete structure, you can actually scale it, and it's got real world business outcomes which help you rank on Google. So now you've seen the difference between a one hour, 10 hour, and a 100 hour build. You can check out the community link in the description because we've also got 100 hour build systems that you can plug and play for lead generation, LinkedIn content creation, and obviously this SEO content generator too. And if you wanna build these kind of systems yourself from scratch, then watch this next video where I break down the full thought process for this exact SEO content generation system in a six hour marathon.